pro cycling is hard, very hard. Pro riders cycle up mountains at astonishing speeds and it was witnessing what these remarkable human beings can do that actually inspired me to try and ride up mountains myself. However, not all mountains are created equal. There's one particular mountain that strikes fear even into the pros. The Monte Zonkalan, a climb so tough it's regarded by many as the hardest in all of pro cycling. Well, we're here, we're gonna ride it, we're gonna find out how tough it is and how it compares to the others. I'm pretty nervous. We need some action. You need the action? Are you sure, man? Yeah. No, I give you the action. <sighs> ah! To give you some context, the Zonkalan isn't the steepest or the hardest climb in the world. Roads like the terrifying 45% Scanupia we've visited before are tougher, but roads like that are considered too steep and too dangerous for a pro bike race. There are actually three possible ascents up the Zonkalan, but we're focusing on the toughest ascent and the one most used in the Giro. It begins in Avaro. Zonkalan is all about the gradient. It's 9.9 .9 kilometers long and gains 1,157 meters with an average gradient of 11.8%. Within pro racing, there are three climbs vying for the title of the hardest. The Angleru in Spain, the Mortirolo in the Italian Alps, and this, the Monte Zoncalan. Now I've ridden the other two before, but today I'm gonna take on the Zoncalan and complete the set with my friend, Alan Marangoni. Ciao a tutti. Are you ready? In addition to being the most Italian man in the world, Alan has also ridden the Monte Zoncalan in the Giro d'Italia. So, well, he's the ideal person to check it out with. And today we're going to complete the set of the horrific Trinity to, uh, in a bid, find out once and for all which one is the hardest. Let's go. Let's do it. Bye. Setting out from Avaro, the first two kilometers hit you straight away. I mean, the average gradient on the Wahoo's been 10, 11% the whole way until we've got to this point, which is a small uh, village before you start the climb proper. Now, it may surprise a lot of people that the Zonkalan is only a recent addition in the Giro d'Italia. The Giro started in 1909, but the Zonkalan was first used as soon as 2003. Uh, and that was, well, I remember Gilberto Simone took an iconic victory, although it was on the other side, the slightly easier ascent. Subsequent editions of the Giro have used the side we're doing today up from Avaro. <laughs> Climb's really picked up now, like 13%. But the record for this climb is, well, we think Gilberto Simone with a time of 39 minutes and three seconds. Yeah, in 2007, he did the best performance in this climb. And uh, he, if, you are, if you think how it's hard, because we are doing this climb and we are so, in trouble. We're just trying thinking, to get up. If you think about Gilberto Simoni, you realize that he's an amazing performance. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's other times that people refer to. So the fastest time on Strava is actually held by Thibaut Pino and it's 35 minutes. But that doesn't include that segment, the first two kilometers at 11%, which we did just before you get to that village. It starts after that. So. For our money, Simone's time, we reckon that is actually the fastest, even though it's not on Strava. Oh. Mamma mia, Oli. Oh, 15% here. Siamo già piantati. 330 watts, just to keep going. Siamo già piantati, Oli. Really? 
really into the thick of it now. 16% is pretty sustained along this section. And you'll see like, there's a bit of a gap between me and Alan and it doesn't look like much of a gap, Ali! but <laughs> like, no <Slow> doubt. <laughs> but this is, this kind of gap is what we see in the, the pro racing on the Zonkalan. You know, you think back to 2011, when Contador was having an epic battle with Nibali. And, you know, seemingly just like 10 meters up the road was Igor Anton. And, you know, that gap looks so bridgeable, and it would be on any other climb. But the Zonkalan, like a 10 meter gap, that is, that is agony to try and cross that. This climb is brutal. Alain, you've ridden the Zonkalan in the Giro d'Italia on more than one occasion. What's it like riding this in the race? So I did it in uh, 2010, 11 and 14. And uh, when uh, I did it in a race uh, in a gruppetto. Yeah. So you, we drop immediately from uh, the head of the race. And uh, we went up uh, very slow, but we had the help of the supporters. Right. Because uh, this climb during Giro Italia is full of supporters everywhere along the road. And uh, one supporter see you in trouble yeah. or uh, uh, suffering, they start to push, push you. And uh, at the end, you received a lot of pushing. Yeah. <laughs> so is a uh, Less worse than uh, to do alone. Yeah. Today, for sure, I suffer more, much more. No push. <laughs> yeah, because nobody pushed me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The subject of gearing is really interesting because the reason why the likes of Copy and, uh, you know, Mercs never had races up here was because back then, they wouldn't have made it because the gearing was too big. You need easy gears, even if you're Eddie Merckx, to get up something like this. Well, Froome, he used uh, a 3432, which, you know, a lot of pros 10, 20 years ago, it would have been unthinkable that you could use such easy gears in a pro bike race. But for a rider of Froome's caliber, using such easy gears just tells you everything you need to know about this climb and how hard it is. So we have three kilometers to go and there's a nice little reprieve section there. That is a much welcome rest. The crazy thing is, is that went to 5%, but 5% gradient, it feels flat after what's just gone before it. It's, it's just crazy how it warps your perceptions. So and before, uh, thank you because you waited me, you waited for me because I was in trouble with, in the gruppetto with myself. Yeah, with all your <laughs> friends. You know, in a, in a bunch in a, during the Giro Italia to the France when you start to to suffer and the climb start to to get hard. Yeah. Someone start to shout, Gruppetto! Was that you? Gruppetto! <laughs> yeah, many times. <laughs> and you hope that someone drop with you. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I mean, you've raced the other big two in Grand Tours, the Motorola and the Anglerou. How does this compare to them for you? I think uh, Angliru is at the same level. Maybe a little bit, little bit worse because uh, uh, you are in an open space. You, you get much more wind. Yeah. Here you are covered from the wind. Yeah. So maybe it's a little bit less hard for this reason. But about the gradient, 
Yeah, that's the sea level. What about the, uh, the Mortirolo? Mortirolo is a very hard climb, but you can find the hairpin. Yeah. In the hairpin, uh, you can uh, breathe a little bit. You get a little okay. kick out of them. Exactly. A little rest. Exactly. And yeah, I know what you mean. I think the other big thing for the Mortirolo is within the context of a race situation, it's never been used as a summit finish. And so, you know, you might have to ride this or the Angleroo harder because you're either racing for the win or you're just racing in the Grappetto to make time cut. We just reached the tunnels. This marks the one kilometer to go mark, the Flamme Rouge. Holly, now it's time to, to do a show, oh. to do a kind of race, no? meters I think this is where Roglic attacks we need some action you need the action are you sure man yeah no I give you the action ah! I did a big effort. You did? Yeah. Ooh. Full gas. All right, so the Monty's on Clan. Now, I'm having done all three now. As an, as an amateur, my perspective is that the Angularoo is the hardest. So, ah, okay. more to Rolo, slightly longer, but like you say, it's more sheltered. And okay. also, the average gradient is slightly less. The Angleroo is harder than this, I feel, because although the it's, well, it's far longer, it's like 13 kilometers. Yeah. So you've got three it's more three, kilometers. Three kilometers more. But it's deceptive because you have 9% for the first section, and then you have a downhill flat section, which takes the average gradient down. Yeah. But that final ramp is, like you say, it's exposed. Yeah. It's really steep. There's a lot of wind. It gets hard. And you, there's, there's a 25% wall. And for me, that makes that, that harder. So. Holly, are you happy about the Don Colan at the end? So oh. you happy to be here with the rain and well, snow? this is the other thing. So <laughs> it, it, it is dependable on other factors, <laughs> like the weather. Look at this. Imagine racing up in this. It's brutal. So epic. But what I will give the, the Don Colan the prize for is when the cloud does blow through and you get a gap in it, out of those three, for me, this is the most beautiful. So if you're going to ride just one of them, do the Don Colan because it's, it's yeah. the prettiest. Of course. All right. I know what because I'm completely done, man. Should we get a because I'm wine? too heavy to do this climb what? and the, the final uh, kick, uh, I went full gas just to drop you, but uh, <laughs> I, I killed myself. <laughs> right, Sebs, you're right. Let's uh, you go down. Let's get some wine. I need wine. Some wine? <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> oh. 